So this is the secret weapon of all leaders and this clarity helps you get focus. Once you're clear on your career, and by the way, this doesn't mean that everything has to be set in stone. If you're 20 something years old, you'll have no idea <laughs> realistically what you actually want out of life. You're just guessing what you want out of life. Take your best guess, have a vision around that, do that for a few years, and then maybe you'll have another guess or another perspective in three, four years. If you're in your 30s, you might have a better idea, you might have a worse idea. You might have thought you have everything figured out in your 20s and you land up in your 30s and now you have a midlife crisis, you have no idea what to do with life anymore. Now you set another vision, you set more, you get more clarity. So these aren't to be set in stone, these are to have a deadline, right? This is my vision for the next three years, this is what I want to do, okay? So now the action step is very clear. Write down your personal vision statement, right? And personal, I mean it. Personal is your career, your business if you have one, or your team if you have a team, or your projects if you're like, let's say you're a rocket scientist, and you, your vision is that my rocket is gonna be in space doing this, that, or the other, whatever, right? And all, all of that is included within who you are. So your career is one part of who you are. Your health is another part, your family or your relationships, your uh, faith if you're you know Christian or Muslim or whatever, your faith if it's important to you. Everything that's important to you goes into your vision statement and make it a three-year vision statement. When I say three years, don't say everything you're gonna do from now to the next three years. Go literally two year three and write down one day, express one day in the present tense. Hey, is the 5th of December 2030 and I am, you know, leading this team of these many engineers and these are the projects we're working on and this is my salary, blah, 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 right? Write down everything in the present tense and look at that vision. Again, we go very deep into this in the book. We even give examples of vision statements and mission statements and everything. And so you can get all of that there. But we're explaining the principles here and then you can get the book if you want more details and more examples. Now, a few guidelines here in terms of the vision statement. So number one, your vision statement or within your vision statement, you should have targets for yourself, right? So as targets, you can say, for example, like in Coca-Cola, we're the number one most known brand in the, the world or whatever. Other targets can be, again, financial. You can have targets in terms of the level of impact you leave or on how many people. You can have targets in terms of countries or languages. So for example, the book, in the vision statement for the book, we want the book to be translated in 50 languages and to sell more than 10,000 copies, right? And so, or sorry, 10 million copies. So whatever those targets are, add targets, make it palpable. Make it so in three years, you know, did I hit this or not? And what did I hit? Did I hit 10 million copies or did I hit 2 million copies? Are we in 50 languages or are we in 30 languages? Wherever you are, that's reality. And then based on that reality, you can say, well, actually, you know, the, the only book that's translated in more than 30 languages in the Bible <laughs> is the Bible. And then other than that, the best business book of all time is translated into 25 languages. So I'm already the number one most translated book. And so 50 languages is useless, futile, I don't want to be there. Or you can say, you know what? Those 15 languages that no one ever tackled, those people don't have a great business book in their hands. So I'm going to go the extra mile and translate for those countries and those languages as well. Whatever the case may be, you will do a reassessment at the end of your vision, and you can even do a reassessment every year. I do that every year, even though my visions are three to five years. On my birthday, every year, I reassess all of my visions and then see, do I still want this? And if yes, do I still want it the exact same way or do I tweak it somehow? So that's basically it in terms of your vision. And within the vision, please remember that you shouldn't try to be everything for everybody, right? So basically have the vision explained very, very clearly. And then you explain what your contribution is if you want to. I am doing this, right? Other people are doing this, that, and the other. Me, I'm only doing this. This is what I love to do. This is the only thing I do. And all of these other things are handled by these other people, right, in your life. So for example, something I don't like to do, 
I don't like cleaning or organizing or things like that around the house. So we have other people doing that. I delegated that, right? Some people might say, well, that's not the, uh, a family value, right? Because, you know, as a, a father or a husband or whatever, you should clean around the house. And I say, no, you should not. I can take responsibility, 100% responsibility for the cleanliness of the house and delegate the activity to someone else, right? So that's what I decide to do. And so explain everything very, very clearly. And, you know, you can take it from there. I personally know how to cook a lot of dishes. However, I decide not to cook because I don't like the process of cooking. And just like that in business, I don't like the process of hopping on sales meetings. I tend to be very good in sales meetings, but I don't like sales. It's just something I, I don't like how I prefer to do. Uh, consulting to sales and even consulting I do very little because most of my time is spent on planning that's my favorite thing I love strategizing I love planning I love figuring out what the future holds and bring that strategy into the present moment so that we can rally ambitious and talented people to get that vision together this is what you would call a blueprint of the future right so you would literally see the future you can envision it. Every time you read it, it's a vivid imagination of how it's going to be. And you can almost feel it. Like you can feel how it's going to, going to be like when you hit that vision, right? So this is very important to have within your repertoire of tools. That's one of the tools that you use to make decisions on what should I do today or what should I do this quarter, next quarter. Your vision will tell you what you need to do because the vision tells you the end result. So for example, if we want to have 1000 clients simultaneously, we need to first get a thousand clients because right now we have a hundred. So we need better outreach systems so that we have more leads so that we convert more people, right? So having the vision will tell you what you need to do. And the, on the personal side as well, if you say I have whatever, 200 pounds, right? 90 kilograms and I have this much in muscle mass, this much in fat, whatever, there are, you know, devices that help you measure that. And then, you know, or you can get an idea of some of the things you can do to get there, right? Eat less pizza, you know, eat more broccoli, <laughs> whatever that is for you. And so you now have that blueprint of the future. That blueprint should encompass things like your values. Your values is like, do you value family? Do you value work? Do you value health? Do you like, what do you value? Those values should be encompassed within your vision, right? And then that also helps you figure out the gap that you have from today, from point A to point B, wherever that is, or your vision might be point Z and you're in point A and you have the entire alphabet to go <laughs> to reach your vision. And so every letter is a milestone. But now because you can see that gap, you can say, OK, what are the 20 things I can do to fill that gap from point A to point Z? Right. So this helps you fine tune both your strategy and your moral compass, because you say, hey, do I want to create a business that's 100 percent focused on profits or do I want to create a business where everyone has fun? or where everyone you know, can donate part of their time to charity, to uh, uh, something that they, they, they like, whether that's you know, um, helping poor people or whether that's you know, uh, building houses or whether, whatever that is, right? Or animals, you know, um, saving animals or things of that nature. Another thing that your vision can have is for example, a problem or a challenge that you feel that exists right now in the world that you can solve right this is like your the main problem that you solve by existing right whether that's in your career or in your uh, personal life and that helps me a lot because there are many parts of the world that i feel aren't as let's say well organized as they could be or they they're not as ethical as they could be or things of that nature let me give you two examples in my career one of my businesses is within the um area of marketing within marketing 
there are so, so, so many marketing agencies, like crazy, I don't know, probably millions of marketing agencies. And sadly, the vast majority of them just take your money and give nothing in return, right? They just literally, they, you can feel at the end of the relationship that you just lost all of the money and they didn't even try. And even if they tried, they didn't succeed. And even if they succeeded, they're very small results, etc., etc. Like you didn't get value for it. So within uh, my marketing agency, we have a motto, a slogan that we say, and that slogan is, we measure dollars, not likes. We do not care how many people like a post. We care about has that post gotten our client the revenue that they wanted to make? Has it generated the leads that it needed to generate and the right quality of leads, right? So that's our slogan. That's, our, that's the big problem that we solve within our industry, which is whenever someone works with us, we say, okay, how much money are you making right now? 2 million. Okay, how much money do you want to make by the end of the year in 12 months? 4 million. Oh my God, you want to double your business in 12 months? Like, yes, and I'm sure we can do it. We just need, I calculated it. We need these many leads, these many sales, these many projects, etc. And then we put together a plan for them. We execute on the plan. And guess what? In the vast majority of cases, we get them the results that they want. Many times we exceed the results that they want and we even have video case studies of that people saying you know our goal was to go from 4 million to 6 million but we're actually going to hit 8 million this year which is amazing right and we couldn't have done it without you so that's the big problem that we solve within that business and in your career you can solve whatever problem you feel is persistent and within your family for example a problem that you feel that you might feel is that you know ambitious professionals don't spend enough time with their children and you want to be the opposite of that you want to spend as much time with your children you know as possible especially after they become conscious and they speak and you know they're taking on you know uh, values and they're understanding the world right and so that's something you want to prove that's something you want to do that's a universal problem that you solve you know in your personal life okay so now that we've talked about vision let me talk about something in the book that is very important, which is why do we set a vision in the first place? We set the vision because it allows the pathway to then become clear. So when I say that, I really mean that if you do not know where you are going, you just have a vague idea of like, hey, I want to, you know, be a millionaire. I want to do this. I want to do that. Okay. Any road will take you there. If you want to be a millionaire in marketing, you can do it in PPC and SEO, in content, in you know um, events, in uh, helping conversion with conversion rate optimization, and so on and so forth. Or you can do all of the above, or some of the above, and so on and so forth. Right? Any path will take you there. The issue with that is that when you're so dispersed with your energy and your focus, you do not know how to actually get there because there's so many shiny objects so many things that you have that you literally don't know what to choose at the end of the day and you can feel overwhelmed however when you have a very clear vision of exactly what you want in detail again explained in the present tense then your pathway to reaching it becomes so so much clearer something else i want to mention with regards to the path some something that helps the path becomes clear is to set expectations that actually are reasonable for where you are for example when uh, aaron gives this very good example he's a relatively short guy as compared to you know people in sports and he is also already in his 50s so it's not like he's going to be uh on the usa olympic champion team uh for you know NB nba for example basketball what that means is that if he sets a vision for himself, you know, that in three years he is going to be on the, you know, NBA team, you know, being the best, you know, defensive player or the best offensive player or whatever, that is probably not going to happen. Because even though there is a slight glimmer of chance that you can somehow get there, you need to understand that in that specific example, there are at least at least a million 
other professionals, uh, basketball professionals that are taller than he is, faster, stronger, more competent, and have more chances, way more chances to get that role, that position within the team than him. So that makes it almost impossible, right? He has a 0, 0.000 something chance. So when your vision is almost impossible, statistically speaking, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have it. That just means that the pathway to it can become very clear because you can say, if I want to be in that team, I need to see what are the best people doing and I need to do more than they are because I'm at such a disadvantage or I need to do something completely different than what they are doing and then get there. Or you can have a more reasonable approach, a little, a little bit more rational approach and say, okay, let's say my time to shine in basketball has passed. However, what I can do is I can maybe own a team or I can manage a team or I can, you know, sponsor a team or I can be the person that sells sponsorship or somehow I can be involved with my favorite team and I can still be part of the team, always there with the team, you know, shake their hands, you know, see them train, get an amazing front row seat. I can have every single thing I want, just not actually play on the team because I have this other role there, right? So that helps you guide that path. And we can go into a lot, a lot of examples, you know, with uh, within the book or with other people that have set visions for themselves that were completely audacious and unrealistic, yet they still attain them. You know, people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates and so on and so forth, right? There are a lot, a lot of people as examples. The only thing you need to know is that those are the very, very small minority of business owners or people in general. The vast majority of people, uh, if they set reasonable goals for themselves, they'll generally be happier. Now, if we look at what are, is holding people back typically from reaching their goals, in the vast majority of cases, there are mental blockages, mental things that are keeping them in the scarcity mindset instead of an, an abundance mindset. So something that Aaron asked me to read many years ago, and we recommend you read, is a little book called The Science of Getting Rich. It's very short. I think it's maybe under 100 pages. I can't remember, but it's short. I found it difficult to read because it's a little bit more of an archaic English, but the message does come clear still. And so what we recommend you do is read that book at least once. So this is an action step for you. Read the book at least once, cover to cover, right? That book helps you get rid or helps you understand how the world works and helps you get rid of a scarcity mindset and into going into abundance. Basically, in an abundance mindset, you believe that you can achieve almost everything you want to do within reason, right? Again, if you're, you know, five foot tall, you can, you know, potentially uh, be a, a national NBA player, right, in the top team, especially if you're old and you're not athletic. However, it helps you think outside of the box. It helps you think in the sense of abundance. Hey, what do I actually want? I want to be part of the team, not necessarily as an offensive player, but I want to be there with my favorite team. Okay, what's possible? What can I do, right? And then you figure that out for yourself. It helps you figure that out. And so what we suggest is after you read the book cover to cover, we have a little challenge for you. And I've taken on this challenge and Aaron has as well. We recommend that you read chapters 4, 7, 11, and 14. These four chapters every single day, once a day, for at least 30 consecutive days. This is our challenge to you. Aaron has done this for 90 consecutive days. I only managed to get to 36. He told me do 30. I managed to get 36. I wanted to do 90 just to show him that I can do 90 as well. But I literally just forgot one day uh, to do it. I'm like, oh, I need to start from scratch because that's one of the rules of this challenge. Uh, it's 30 consecutive days. So you don't read it for 15 days and then you stop for two days and then you start again at day 16. No, you start again at day one. So that's the challenge and that's why it's not so easy because you need to do 30 consecutive days. However, 
if you read those consciously consciously and you understand and you take to heart what those four chapters say every single day for at least 30 days we promise that you will be within an abundance mindset and be almost completely gone with scarcity and this helps so much to envision the vision that you actually want and to not judge yourself for wanting more or for you know desiring more in life and so on and so forth so have that abundance mindset and read this book um, so that you can make way make room for everything that you can be capable of moving on from there we highly recommend that you go down this path of setting a vision for yourself and then outlining the path just like we said before with the letters you're at letter a your vision is letter z find out all of the milestones that you need to hit in order to reach that vision obviously one of the action steps is to write down the vision itself and then another action step is to think of okay what are all of the things i can think of right now that i can do to get there what i like to do is i like to plan backwards so what i ask myself is what needs to be in place for this to be a reality and i say okay we need to have a customer success uh, division and we need to have marketing division and the sales division and we need to have these people there and so on and then i think of everything i need for that to be a thing for that to be real and then i plan backwards of okay what's the final thing i'll probably need this and before that what do i need this and before that what do i need and so on and i just plan everything out okay so now that you have you've read the book um the science of getting rich you have your vision you have your little path to how to get there now we should talk about your mission statement so the vision statement is a time in the future that you're striving towards a mission statement is different in the sense that this is just the one sentence guiding north star of everything you want to do in business so the mission statements answers three questions who we are as a team or who i am if you're writing your personal mission statement why do i exist or why do we exist as a team and then what do we do as a team that's it these three things it answers there are many examples of mission statements in the book and everywhere across the internet i'll just going to give you one example from our marketing agency the mission statement is very easy we connect ambitious companies with their ideal clients in a self-sustaining manner that's it that's our mission statement notice that every single word within that mission statement is calculated okay we connect ambitious clients or ambitious companies so we don't work with mediocre companies we don't work with companies that don't want to grow we only work with companies that are at you know half a million i want to be at two million or at or at 20 million they want to get to 50 million and so on these are real stories by the way that we've helped people do we only work with ambitious companies and we connect those ambitious companies with their ideal clients so we work on figuring out what those ideal clients look like we find them in the market we do the prospecting and we connect those people with our clients right and then the final part is in a self-sustaining manner that means that if they pay us whatever ten thousand dollars a month or 120 grand a year they should make at least half a million or one million dollars as roi as a result of our efforts right and so it just depends on their profit margin but they should at least minimum minimum break even on the efforts that we are doing so we're helping them we're helping connect ambitious companies with their ideal clients in a self-sustaining manner that's what we do that's our mission and so you can have a mission and we highly recommend you define a mission for yourself that answers those three things uh, who we are why we exist and what do we do and within that that mission statement has within it the north star of every single decision you'll ever need to take because when you ask yourself should we do this today for our company and you can ask is it aligned with our mission yes okay is does it get us closer to our vision yes okay then let's do it 
Another version is, let's say you have to decide between two things, two people, two clients, two um, solutions to a challenge. So yes, you have to decide between two things. You ask which one of these is more aligned with our mission. You say, okay, this one. And which one of these is more aligned with our vision? This one. If they're in conflict, if they're two different, like one helps us get closer to our vision, one helps us stay true to our mission, Typically, what we recommend is you find the hybrid of the two. You find a way to still stay true to your mission whilst getting close to your vision. And we find, with trial and error, and after 14 years of doing this, we find that every single time we can find a hybrid solution to that challenge, right? Or a hybrid decision.